Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, and pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall be given into your bosom. Luke chapter 6, verse 36 to 38. We are living in troubled times. Wars and catastrophes have brought human suffering to an unparalleled degree of misery, human displacement, famine, disease, brokenness in body and soul everywhere. Moreover, with the culture of death already in place, in many societies today, millions have lost their faith. Sin is already an acceptable way of life especially among the youth, a phenomenon unparalleled in the history of mankind. To live in a sinful lifestyle has become an accepted, tolerated choice. Christ, however, came not to condemn the sinner and not to neglect the afflicted, but to show mercy to them. He said in Luke chapter 6, verse 36 to 38, Be merciful, Stop condemning. Forgive. God is faithful to His merciful covenant love, and we are called to that same mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. During Lent, we do well to pray for the gift of mercy. In the Summa Theologica, St. Thomas Aquinas defines mercy as the compassion in our hearts for another person's misery, a compassion which drives us to do what we can to help him. There are two aspects of mercy, affective and effective. It is affective, that is, an emotion, when we feel pity for the plight of others because of their material, spiritual, and moral miseries. We feel pity for them because we too are subject to these miseries. Our affective sympathy then becomes an empathy because of the closeness and friendship we share with others. The person who loves regards his friend as another son, and so he counts his friend's troubles as his own and grieves over them as if they were his own. Affective mercy is an emotional human mercy, not exactly a divine mercy, for human mercy in many times helpless to remove the misery in the person suffering from any form of slavery. Effective mercy, on the other hand, is a positive action that we do to relieve the miseries of others. It is taking steps to do good to help others. Effective mercy is proper to the divine mercy. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, there are four common miseries. First, there is the suffering that goes against our natural appetite for existence and life, such as misery due to human frailty. For example, sickness. Second, there is suffering that strikes us suddenly and unexpectedly. These are miseries due to accidents caused by natural calamities. Third, is the suffering that strikes an innocent person when he consistently pursues the good, yet he meets only overpowering evil due to persecution. Fourth, is the worst kind of suffering. It is suffering caused by spiritual and moral sin, where healing can only come from the sacrament of reconciliation. In this last misery, we need honest repentance before God 
and neighbor to receive God's mercy. Just as we ask God's mercy, we ought to show mercy to those who offend us. We are to forgive as we had been forgiven. Christ's mandates are firm as He calls us to be merciful, to stop judging and condemning others, and to forgive as we had been forgiven. St. John Paul II wrote in 1984 document entitled Reconciliation and Penance, he said that God's mercy is a continuous move of God for reconciliation with sinful mankind. It is a reconciliation whereby God as Father in the blood and the cross of His Son made man reconciles the world to Himself and thus bring into being a new family of those who have been reconciled. In essence, the history of salvation is the wonderful history of a reconciliation of God's mercy. To correct the sinner is a work of mercy. Remember that the works of mercy with which we practice a virtue are both corporal, like almsgiving and visiting the sick, and spiritual, for example, teaching the ignorant, giving good advice, admonishing sinners, and praying for the deceased. Although both the corporal and spiritual works of mercy are necessary and important, St. Thomas, following church tradition, considers the spiritual work of mercy superior to the corporal ones, as they are more directly related with eternal salvation. Particularly important of these spiritual works of mercy is the admonishing sinners because by so doing, we drive out our brother's evil, namely sin, the removal of which pertains to charity, rather than the removal of an external loss or of a bodily injury. St. Vincent de Paul gives us a good example. In the 17th century, France was greatly devastated by its foreign aggressors. But instead of condemning these people, the good saint prayed instead for strength from God to share with them His mercy to remove the misery of famine, hunger, and despair among his countrymen. Saint Vincent was inspired by God to organize throughout France feeding centers to feed practically the whole country that would have died of famine. While busy distributing food, clothing, and temporary shelters to all, he kept in mind that the worst misery that afflicted the French people was their sin. He therefore made sure wherever there are fitting centers, he had priests and religious who would catechize and lead his countrymen to a reconciliation with God. This humble and selfless acts of this priest saved friends from pandemic poverty and gave them courage coming from God's love and mercy to rebuild themselves and make their country once again a God-fearing and loving nation. Saint Vincent de Paul was hailed in his country as a national hero. Despite his opposition, he made the great difference in his country because he lived the mercy of God as he received it from Jesus. We see many poor and afflicted sinners coming to us daily. Instead of condemning them, we should have that merciful love of the Father in heaven to see them as children of God and as our own brothers in need. Our greatest charity to them is to lead them back to God through the sacrament of reconciliation. 
Know the time of confession in your parish so you can invite all those who go to you for help to confession as well. St. Teresa of Calcutta sees all the poor and miserable people she encountered as Jesus calling her to love. Whatever you did to the least of your brethren, you did it unto me. St. Faustina in her diary wrote, You are to show mercy to your neighbors always and everywhere. You must not shrink from this or try to excuse yourself from it. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. O oh, loving God, I was once your great enemy, worse than St. Paul. But because of your merciful love, you have brought me back to your fold. I beg of you, dear Lord, for those who are still in the same situation as I was, that you may extend your mercy to them. Make me, dear Lord, an instrument of your mercy, that you may bring them back to the joy of your loving embrace in the sacrament of reconciliation. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.